costly mistake anonymous. My nightmare started when I stumbled into the world of the dark web. Now, I'm not some tech whiz or a thrill seeker, but late one night, fueled by boredom and a touch of curiosity, I decided to just dive into the forbidden corners of the internet. I'd heard stories about the dark web, whispers of it being a digital underworld where the real shady stuff happens. So, armed with my laptop and a hefty dose of caution, I downloaded Tor browser and started digging. After a bunch of cryptic forums and sketchy links, I found myself on a site called the Red Door. No flashy graphics, just a plain red door icon on a black background. The threads were a mix of creepy and downright disturbing. People discussing illegal trades, hacking tips, drugs, and other absolutely disturbing things you wouldn't believe exist. It was like stumbling into a cyberpunk nightmare. And then, I saw a thread that stood out, the room of faces. The description claimed it was a live stream where people could anonymously share their darkest secrets. Now, I'm no saint, but the idea of strangers pouring out their souls on a hidden camera intrigued me. I clicked on it, half expecting some twisted reality show. The stream opened to a dimly lit room with a single chair in the center. It looked like an interrogation room from a crime drama. The chat box was buzzing with usernames like Shadowwalker and Whispering Ghost. A bit cliche, but hey, it added to the atmosphere. A masked figure entered the room, their face hidden by a sinister looking mask. They gestured to the chair, and moments later, someone in a hoodie took a seat. The masked figure spoke in a distorted voice, asking the person to confess their darkest secret. As the hoodie wearer spilled their guts, confessing to things that would make your grandma faint, the chat box exploded with comments. Some cheered on the confessor, while others typed cryptic messages about paying the price for their sins. I thought it was all just a show, some sick form of online entertainment. But then, things took a bizarre turn. The masked figure started revealing details about the confessor's life that no one on the internet should know. Names, addresses, family secrets, it was like they had a window into this person's soul. That's insane. The confessor freaked out, understandably, and abruptly left the room. The chat box went wild, demanding more confessions. I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was witnessing something beyond a mere internet stunt. Against my better judgment, I decided to try it myself. I didn't know what I was thinking, I mean, one can get curious, right? I typed a fake confession, something harmless to test the waters. To my horror, the masked figure acknowledged it and started spouting details about my life, my real name, my address, even my favorite childhood pet's name. I panicked and shut down the stream. That's when it hit me, this wasn't some elaborate show. The room of faces had something darker at play, something that could pry into your life with an unsettling accuracy. Days passed, and the whole experience haunted me. I couldn't shake off the feeling that my digital footprint was being watched. Every creak in the house, every shadow in the corner of my eye, felt like a reminder that the room of faces was still lurking in the virtual shadows. One evening, as I was browsing the regular web, I received an anonymous email. No subject, just a link. Against my gut feeling, I clicked it. The link led me to a live stream and my blood ran cold. It was the room of faces, and this time, the masked figure was addressing me directly. They knew everything, my deepest fears, my regrets, the time I cheated on a math test in fifth grade. It was like my life had been laid bare for the world to see. The masked figure gave me an ultimatum, confess a real, gut-wrenching secret, or face the consequences of having my life exposed. Panic set in, and I racked my brain for something worthy of confessing. 
but the more I thought, the more I realized that the room of faces had become a twisted puppet master, pulling the strings of my sanity. I refused to play their sick game. I shut down the stream, disconnected from the internet, and even contemplated tossing my laptop into the nearest dumpster. But the room of faces wasn't done with me. Late at night, I started receiving bizarre messages on my phone. Anonymous texts that hinted at things only I knew. Photos of me taken through my webcam when I thought it was off. It was like the room of faces had invaded my life, transcending the digital realm. Fear became my constant companion. I couldn't escape the feeling that I was being watched, even in the privacy of my own home. Shadows in the dark took on sinister shapes, and every unexpected noise sent my heart racing. Desperate, I sought the help of a cybersecurity expert. They traced the room of faces back to a network of servers hidden in the depths of the dark web. The expert warned me that these were not your average hackers, they were a collective of cyber stalkers with a twisted sense of power. Together, we devised a plan to cut off the room of faces from my life. It involved changing all my passwords, wiping my digital footprint as much as possible, and going off the grid for a while. It was like trying to escape a relentless ghost haunting every corner of my existence. As I implemented the plan, the room of faces fought back. They sent me threatening emails, detailing events from my childhood that I'd long forgotten. It was like they had a file on every aspect of my life, waiting to unleash it in the most unsettling way possible. But slowly, as I distanced myself from the digital world, the grip of the room of faces weakened. The messages became less frequent, the shadows less menacing. It was as if they couldn't reach me beyond the confines of the internet. Months passed, and the room of faces faded into a distant nightmare. I learned to live with a heightened sense of caution, always looking over my shoulder, both in the physical and virtual realms. The experience changed me. I became a digital recluse, avoiding the dark web like the plague. The room of faces had taught me that some doors should remain firmly closed, no matter how tempting the secrets behind them might be. So, here's a word of advice, be wary of the digital shadows, for once you step into the realm of the dark web, you might find yourself entangled in a web of horrors that no amount of digital savvy can escape. If you found any enjoyment in the video, I implore you to click that like button and subscribe if you dare.